Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Today I wanted to go over one of, if not the coolest features in the Apple ecosystem, universal control. This week I finally got a chance to play around with it. It's been available for a little bit on the beta iPadOS and macOS versions, and I thought I would take a peek and see where the current state of this feature is at. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this was something that was announced a while ago at WWDC 21. So that would have been around last spring, I think around June sometime. And basically what this allows you to do is sync up two machines so that they almost act as one. A lot of people describe this as your iPad acting as an external monitor, but that's not really the case. If you're looking for something that is strictly an external monitor, I think that's a problem that Sidecar has had solved for a while. With Universal Control, these are still two separate systems, Mac OS and iPad OS. And what it's essentially doing is sharing hardware controls, that being the mouse and the keyboard. And it gives you the ability to drag and drop files between the two systems, sort of like an interactive airdrop. The coolest thing about this is there is minimal setup involved. You're just supposed to be able to plop the two devices next to each other and everything automatically works out of the gate. Uh, the whole experience is pretty seamless. With things like Sidecar, there was always a little bit more setup involved to get everything connected each time. So in my opinion, this is a lot smoother and feels like a little bit more organic of a setup, if that makes sense. To build this feature from a technical standpoint is probably pretty complex, which I'm assuming is why it's taken this long to get into our hands. Uh, now that I can actually see this and test it out and get a sense for how useful it is, I want to dive in here and go through the setup and give you my impression on things in their current state and where I'd like to see this feature go in the future. To start off to set this up, you'll need to be running on a compatible device. If you have a semi-recent iPad and MacBook, you should be covered. And you'll also need Mac OS 12.3 and iPad OS 15.4. These are both in beta right now, and to try out any beta software, you'll have to sign up for the Apple beta software program. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to that, or you could just Google it. Uh, but you should be able to follow the directions there to get set up. If you're watching this a few months from now, this might be completely unnecessary. Uh, in any case, once you have both of those operating systems installed, we're gonna head over to our Mac and hit the Apple logo and go to System Preferences. From there, we're going to go to general and make sure allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices is checked. After that, there are a few other options we can look at. We can go back to system preferences and go to displays, go to universal control. And there are a few checkboxes in here that you can choose from. I'm just going to select all of them. Now that's all that I'm going to do on Mac OS. From there, I'm gonna hop over to my iPad and go to settings, general, Airplay and handoff. And then I'm going to make sure that I have handoff toggled to the on position, as well as the cursor and keyboard option. And that's it. We're all set up. We don't have to touch anything else in here from now on. It should just automatically work. So now what happens when I have my iPad within range, which I think Apple states is about 10 meters or so, I can go to the edge of my screen and this little sidebar pops out and I can see it on my iPad and wherever I slide this little circle in relation to the screen icon is essentially where the iPad is positioned vertically in relation to my other screen. It's important to note here that the Mac or the iPad have no spatial awareness, meaning if I put my iPad down beside my Mac, the Mac doesn't know where it's sitting, just that it's within range. So I could just as easily slide this out to the other side of the screen and my Mac would think that it was on the left versus the right. I can also adjust the screen placement in the system preferences under display as well so if anything happens where you want to do some manual adjustment, you can find it in there. Once you've gone through to the other side, you can freely move back and forth with the cursor and I find it really smooth. It works pretty much flawlessly, especially just going back and forth between the screens. Or say if I pop open a Safari window on the iPad, I can use my keyboard and mouse to interact with it. Uh, stuff like that, sure, it's totally fine, but what if we go beyond that? We're supposed to be able to drag and drop files and sometimes even drop things into specific apps that are universal control compatible. I've seen some people saying that this works for them without any issues, but part of the reason that I really wanted to make this video was just to show some of the issues that I ran into. 
When I first tried this with something simple like dragging a picture from the Photos app on my iPad to the desktop of my Mac, it worked and I had no issues. But what I found was when I started doing things like dragging a file on an incompatible app or just in random places, just generally transitioning between the two, things get weird. More often than not, my cursor would actually get stuck on the iPad screen. And if I locked the screen, the mouse would be accessible on the Mac. But as soon as I would go over to the iPad after that, it would lock into that iPad screen again. And you would essentially have to restart the iPad to get it back running normally. It seems like when you do things in a really predictable manner where you know your action will work successfully and you know the outcome, it behaves like it should. But when you start getting into cases where things are a little bit unpredictable, that's when things can grind to a halt, at least in my experience. This is still in beta, and I was expecting something like this to happen. Obviously, before this ever gets out of beta, you would make sure that all these bugs were resolved, but I think a few other things that I would like to see would be some kind of visual cue when you're dragging from one system to another, just as to what is possible versus what isn't. Currently, it's pretty unclear how that breaks down. Maybe you even show some kind of alert pop-up or something to let someone know that you can't do something. It's just some visual cue. It's probably a really difficult UX problem to solve, but I think it's something that needs to be addressed still. Also, the title Universal Control suggests that we should have, well, universal control. I'd love it if we could possibly have access to cameras and different hardware controls, which again would be really handy, say if you're on a Mac mini and you want to hop on a video call using your iPad camera and your mic. Uh, it'd be really great for cases like that. I'd also like to see some expansion in compatibility with apps, and I'm sure as this feature is developed and becomes more mainstream, it's likely that we will see more of that. I think for universal control to be a really great feature, it can't just be an external display where you can use your keyboard and mouse. I want to be able to do things like drag a picture from my laptop into Lightroom on my tablet and edit it with my Apple Pencil and then shoot it back to my laptop. I know that they did have some examples similar to this in the WWDC keynote where they originally showed this off, but it can't just be dragging pictures from Procreate to a presentation. Uh, you need things predictable, and if they aren't predictable, there needs to be some way to convey what's possible versus what isn't. I do see a lot of potential here, and I can't wait to use universal control a few months from now when things are maybe a little bit more stable. It will be interesting to see what that timeline looks like, and if this is going to be something that is constantly evolving, and maybe some things are added to it, or if it will end up just being a stripped down version of what a lot of us were expecting. I'd love to know what everyone else thinks of this feature. Are you into it? Will you try this out or have you already? Or are you waiting around for this to drop in an official release? Uh, please drop your comments down below and let me know what you think. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot. Uh, hit subscribe if you would love to support this channel and you want to see more tech related content. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.